Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2018 release Nightmare Cinema by a few directors. Uh, we'll talk about that. It's an anthology film. Um, this is hitting Shutter. When this video is going up, it is going to be on Shutter same day. So Tuesday, the 29th of October, 2019, it's on Shutter. Go check it out. Uh, I'm not going to do any spoilers for this since it is relatively new, and I'm mainly doing it because uh, I got a screener copy from Shutter to do, so I don't want to give spoilers away for anyone who might want to watch it through Shutter or any other way you choose. But I would recommend through Shutter because Shutter is awesome, and thank you Shutter for the screeners. So first of all, from what I understand, this project was put together by Mick Garris. Yes, the Mick Garris of Hocus Pocus fame, Critters Two fame, The Stand fame. Um, what I love him for most, Masters of Horror, doing that series, and then I think he was still involved with it when, when it went to Fear Itself as well. So um, when I think of anthology, I think of Mick Garris. So I love the fact that here is a film, it's an anthology film with a bunch of stories in it, done by Mick Garris. Uh, the other thing is, I'm, a, I'm a, not just a big fan of Mick Garris because of the stuff that he's done film-wise, but he has a really cool podcast called Postmortem with Mick Garris, and he interviews people from the horror film industry, and he's really good at interviewing people, and he gets really good information out of these individuals. And one of the greatest things, too, is when he has people on sometimes, I'm like, I don't even recognize that name. I don't know who that is. But when I start listening to the interview, I'm like, oh, I know their work. I just didn't know what the person's name was. So it's really cool to then learn a lot. Um, so it's a wonderful podcast if you like Mick Garris or you want to like Mick Garris, which you should want to like him because he's awesome. Uh, check out Postmortem Podcast with Mick Garris. Anyway, let's talk about Nightmare Cinema. So I'm going to give individual star ratings for each of the stories, and then I'll give an overall star rating for Nightmare Cinema as a whole. So let's, let's start by going with the first story, which was The Thing in the Woods. Now this was directed by Alejandro Bruget. I think that's how you say it. I'm sorry if I'm messing it up. Uh, he did One of the Dead. Now, I haven't seen that film, but I've heard only good things, and it's been on my list to get to. The problem is my list is like 500 films long or so, so it's going to take a while before I get to everything I want to get to. So, uh, the acting is, is kind of rough in this one. This is one of the ones that had the lesser acting. Um, there were like two of them in particular that the acting was kind of, eh, and this was one of them. Uh, so, I was like, eh. You know, lesser knowns. Uh, it's hard at first to figure out what, uh, out of the series, sorry, sorry. It's hard at first to figure out if this is a se is serious or not. Jeez, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm messing that up so bad. Uh, it takes a little bit to kind of figure it out. So initially it starts, it's very tense, and you're just like, oh, this is like kind of like a slasher. Um, and then you're like, there's some off things kind of happening, and you're just like, is this taking itself seriously, or is this trying to not be serious? And so I, I was I was kind of struggling with how to feel about this initially, because I didn't know where it was trying to go. But, like with most films, you watch it long enough, and you get a good idea of what it's trying to do. So, um, there are actually a bunch of really dumb decisions that characters make in this. Uh, and at, at first, very early on, when a few of the dumb decisions happened, I was like, is this bad writing, or is this good writing? And I figure out it's good writing because it's not trying to be serious. It's definitely not trying to be serious. And it doesn't really spoil anything going into it. It's actually better that you know that it's not trying to be serious for when you watch it. Um, I, I really like, I think that's one of the biggest strengths of this particular story is that it doesn't take things seriously. It's very tongue-in-cheek. And that makes it really fun, in my opinion. Uh, it throws in a twist that I did not at all see coming. I didn't think there'd be any twists in this. There is a twist. I didn't see it coming. You probably won't either. Uh, but it really made me question things with the film, like story-wise. I was just like, what is actually going on here? Because I thought I knew what was going on here, and now I'm not quite sure I know what's going on here. Um, and it's kind of like, is this real? Is this not real? Like, what's? It, it's interesting. Uh, the mix of practical effects and computer graphics actually were done pretty well. Uh, they played off each other quite well um and a lot of the times with films nowadays when i see computer graphics used i'll just be like mm, it's not looking so hot but uh i feel like it was done well enough and the shots were quick enough with this one that i didn't see any real issues like it looked pretty good 
Uh, and the directing with this film is done in a very fun way. Uh, I quite like this one. I think, is this, yeah, I think this one's my favorite. Of all the stories, this one is my favorite. There are still good ones for me to talk about, but this one's my favorite by far. Uh, the Thing in the Woods by Alejandro Berger. I I dug it. I'm going to give it four stars. Four, star, four, four stars out of five with half stars in play. So that's where I put that one. The next one was called Mirari. Now, this one was directed by Joe Dante, who has done, you know, a lot of stuff like Piranha and The Howling and Gremlins and... You could go on and on and on for a while. He's got a laundry list of films. So he's very well established. Uh, this one speaks to insecurity and kind of what happens when it gets out of control. Uh, it's kind of a theme that's been seen in film quite a bit. It's 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 very um, societal commentary type story. Uh, the thing that kind of sucks about it is I've seen this type of thing done before and it doesn't bring a whole lot of new anything to it, in my opinion. And actually, the film seems a little bit slow, which I don't like because it's short. So when you get slow, when it's short, it's kind of rough. And eh. um, uh, it feels very clean, though. I mean, from an aesthetic standpoint, it feels clean, pristine, and fake. Which is intentional, because that goes with the story. And to match up with that, I felt like the camera work kind of mirrored that because it was extremely smooth and looked really good. So aesthetically and directorially, it was, it was quite good. I just wasn't really digging the story too much. Um, and I did guess where it was going extremely early on. I guessed where it was going within probably the first five minutes of it. Um, you know, not to say that that'll happen with everyone, but for me, it was kind of like, eh, it felt kind of predictable for me. Um, and I've seen this done before. I've seen the same thing basically done before. It didn't bring much of anything new, unfortunately. I'm going to give this two stars. This was my least favorite of all of them, unfortunately. Um, I hate to say that because I quite like a lot of the stuff Joe Dante does. But it is what it is. Uh, then there was the next story. It was called Mashit. Uh, this one was directed by Ruai Kitamura, who I like quite a bit. Uh, he did films such as Downrange, which, which I think was his most recent one. I might be wrong on that, I think. It was his most recent one that I saw, which I think was a Shudder original. I don't know if it's an exclusive or an original. I think it was a Shudder original. That one's pretty fun. Uh, he did Midnight Meat Train, which is great. A lot of people say good things about Midnight Meat Train. Actually, I don't think I've heard anyone who's seen it say anything bad about it but not me trains great and the one i like most of his a very early film for him versus which is crazy has barely any dialogue and is just super fun so check those out uh this one is directed really well and it looks really good uh and at first it's not very fun but then it becomes very fun by the end of it so yeah the only one of my biggest problems though is it hits a subgenre of horror that i I really don't like typically. I'm not going to say particularly what that is because I don't want to give too much away, but um, I don't like the subgenre. So I feel like when you hear my rating, you kind of need to keep that in mind because maybe there's some bias coming through in my rating with not liking that subgenre. Um, it has some really good visuals in it and it has some really good horror moments, like particular things where they're like, okay, now there needs to be like, uh, a scary or creepy or, or gross thing that happens here and whatever they chose there was a pretty good choice so there's a lot of that that goes on through it that i was like oh yeah, yeah pretty good uh the overall story though did feel really flat to me but once again that could have something to do with my bias i really can't tell so other people out there watch this and then put a comment there down there and let me know is it my bias on the story or what because i i don't know uh, the very end was actually very fun. Uh, it was over the top, but over the top in a good way, and it reminded me a little bit of Versus, which I was happy about. It had crazy music in the end, which I thought was really fun. There was a lot of synth in it, which, you know, I dig it. I, I, I'm a product of the 80s. I love 80s horror, and it kind of gave me, like, this 80s feel with all the synth in it, and I liked it. I thought it matched up really well with all the over-the-top stuff going on at the end, and there are insane, there's an insane amount of blood that occurs in this, and it was fun. It was done in a fun way. So overall, um, I think based off the story, I brought it down a little bit more than, than you might think 
Um, I'm going to give it three stars. I still liked it. And that's saying a lot, seeing as that the subgenre it is, I don't like. So for me to then give it a three star, considering that, is actually pretty good. All right, so then there's the next one. <clears throat> Excuse me, second to last one. Called This Way to Egress. Now this one was directed by David Slade, who has done such things as Hard Candy, which is really good. 30 Days of Night, which is good. Not as good as Hard Candy, in my opinion, but it is good. And ba Bandersnatch, the Black Mirror movie, Bandersnatch, which is a good time crazy movie uh so he's got a good pedigree um he chose to go black and white on this which feels really weird and out of place considering that the whole rest of the film is in color but it really does fit the actual story and the aesthetic and the kind of feel that they were going for so at first it feels a little bit weird just because you know you're getting you're well into the movie and everything's in color and then they switch you to to black and white so you're just kind of like oh this feels a little odd but stick with it for the story it makes a lot of sense and it actually enhances it and it makes it feel like kind of surreal which really really does contribute to the overall story of this one uh there's some clear cronenberg influence in this and i love it i love cronenberg i love when people are influenced by him and include cronenbergian type things so big thumbs up on that uh there's some pretty creepy stuff in this and it feels gross it feels gross it feels creepy it feels like somewhat scary and dirty and um i think that really helps the story so the ambiance that was set up the set just looks perfect for what the story is in my opinion it's very artistically done too like the way it's shot and the way everything looks and i do think once again like the black and white helps play into that it makes it feel kind of like classic and class e the whole thing is effective and strong it, it's the whole thing is a metaphor for something i'm not going to say exactly what you will figure it out when you watch it for sure but it is a metaphor for something and i think that metaphor works very very well very well uh and it has the best best acting of all the stories to be honest uh one of the biggest things is it's kind of um the lead in it is annabeth gish and she is a quite a good actress and she does a really good job in that role she has the largest role in the story so i mean she's important to it and she did a really good job with it i excellent so overall, um, I'm actually going to match this one up. I'm also going to give it a four star to match up with the first one uh, that I said was my favorite. So I think, yeah, this the first one was my favorite. The, sorry, call it, um, The Thing in the Woods, that one was my favorite, but just slightly, just a hair over this way to egress. Both of them were quite good. Then we come to the last, like, story story, and then I'll talk a little bit more about some other stuff, but... Um, the last story is called Dead, and this one was directed by Mick Garris. Uh, this one caught me off guard because of the way things kind of ramp up in it. Um, I wasn't expecting it to ramp up as it did when it did. And I'd be interested to see if other people who see this have the same experience or if they sensed something coming. We'll see. Uh, this thing plays hard on emotion, but I think... Once you settle into that and you kind of realize that's the point of it, you get it. Like, it fits. It makes sense. It works. Um, for that reason, it doesn't, it makes it kind of horror light, which isn't a problem as long as you're okay with that. I am okay with like horror light stuff. I'm more looking for story. I'm more looking for a decent story, a good story. Not necessarily, is this pure horror? Is this over the top horror, gory, violent, whatever? Although it is horror, it does have horror to it. It's just not as full-on horror as the other stories are. So it kind of stands in contrast in that sense. Uh, it speaks well to the struggles of dealing with trauma. I think that's really well put in the script for this one. And it comes across on the screen. Uh, like I said, it plays really hard on emotion. And it's kind of heavy. Like it, It's core message and it's core story. It's kind of heavy emotionally, and I, I'm not sure I was expecting that. I don't, I'm not sure I was totally ready for that watching something like this, but um, I did enjoy it. Uh, there's a segment of CG in this that I actually did not like toward the end because it kind of felt like it was a little, well, more than a little, it was heavy-handed. It was very heavy-handed with the story. It, I, f I felt like I really needed that to be brought back quite a bit, but, um, you know, 
that's a small thing. Overall, uh, dug it, thought it was pretty pretty good. Um, give it three stars out of five on that one. Uh, quite enjoyed it. Uh, the then there there's a segment that they kind of called the pro projectionist, but it's actually just uh, you get it in little pieces here and there. It's one of the things that ties everything together, all the stories. Uh, in a fun way, and I actually did like the way that all the stories were tied together. Mick Garris handled that. He did The Projectionist. And it involves Mickey Rourke in an acting role. And I thought Mickey Rourke seemed like he had a really good time with that role. And he seemed pretty sinister and, like, delightfully sinister, I have to say. Uh, after seeing the film, I was like, I think I wanted more Mickey Rourke in this. Like, more of the Projectionist parts... I would love to have it expanded upon. I don't know if there's like maybe a director's cut that could come out with a lot more of that. I don't know if they shot extra of that and there's some on the cutting room floor, but I would like more of Mickey Rourke's performance in this because it was pretty fun. Um, yeah. And the last thing I wrote on here is that I will take another one of these films. I had a fun time with it. You know, the majority of the stories I liked, there was, I, I would say the only one I didn't, I would just say I didn't really like was the Mirari one, but other than that, I liked all the other ones more than just like, eh, it's fine. I liked, I liked them all quite a bit. So overall, I thought this was a good um, movie out of five stars. I'm going to give this movie a three and a half. I enjoyed it. As far as an anthology film goes, it's, it's one of the good ones. I've seen some other anthology films and it's a real mixed bag. But that's one of the great things too about anthology is that you're not going to necessarily love everything, but you, your chances of finding something that you like are increased because it's multiple stories done by multiple people. And, you know, just like I'm seeing with the Creep Show series on Shudder, you know, there, there are certain shows, uh, certain stories within it, sorry, that I really like that other people are like, oh, I didn't like those at all, and vice versa. The ones that I'm like, oh, I really did not like that one, and other people are like, oh, well, that was my favorite. And that's the beauty of an anthology, is that there's something there for almost everyone, and people are going to not necessarily agree on it, and that's good. It just means that you can hit a wider audience. So I love it. Um, fan of this one, definitely check it out if you haven't, because you know I didn't give you any spoilers, really, so... Uh, big thanks to Mick Garris and crew for, for doing this film. And like I said, let's have another one. I will have another one, please. Um, and if Mick ends up seeing this on some extremely off chance he sees this, uh, I love you, man. I, I love what you've done. I have nothing but respect for you. And keep that podcast going because it is. I look forward to it. Anyway, thanks, everyone, for checking this out. If you want to encourage me a little bit, help me out because I don't make money on this or anything. It's just for fun. Hit that subscribe. It means a lot for my channel in the long run. Put some comments down there on your thoughts on Nightmare Cinema, um, if you've seen it. And uh, you can do the thumbs up, but that doesn't matter as much to me as a subscribe. But thank you for checking this out regardless, and until next time, keep it brutal.